Because it's so close to one of Saturn's rings, the gravitational pull of this tiny moon is strong enough to create the gigantic waves. It shows how kind of powerful and remarkable these gravitational interactions are uh, between the moons and the rings. These waves are only one way that moons put their mark on rings. They also add to the shapes of the rings so that you get gaps and, and edges and uh, very clear divisions between the rings. Moons that create these edges and divisions are called shepherd moons. In Saturn's F ring, there's a moon on each side that actually herds the particles into the ring. These moons, Prometheus and Pandora, are in essence Saturn's cowboys. They work just like cow hands you'd find on a ranch. All right, let's go. All right. Let's go get them. Get, get, get. What we're doing here is much like what Saturn's moons do to Saturn's rings. We're herding them just like the moons shepherd the rings. For example, Prometheus and Pandora herd the F ring. I'm like Prometheus, I'm on the inside and uh, my partner is on the outside, that's Pandora. And we're keeping these cattle in line just like the moons keep the rings in line. When a moon interacts with a ring particle, it can kick it into a higher orbit further from Saturn or kick it into a lower orbit closer to the planet. Pandora, being further from Saturn, orbits more slowly than the particles in the ring. If a particle strays out, Pandora's gravity pulls on it. This slows the particle down, causing it to fall back to the ring. On the inside, Prometheus orbits at a higher speed than the ring particles. Its gravity pulls them forward, increasing their energy and causing them to move away from Saturn. The overall effect is that the two moons confine the particles between them, creating a sharply defined ring. The moons play an enormous role, a very fundamental role in the, in the way the rings look and how they got formed. The moons can shepherd the particles in the rings so that you get gaps and, and edges and uh, very clear divisions between the rings. So the rings are completely dominated by the moons from, from the beginning to the end. The glittering bands of Saturn sparked a quest for more rings. Yet they were the only known rings for centuries. Ring hunters dreamed of finding others, suspected there were more, and yet could see nothing visible like Saturn's. As the 20th century waned, a small team of astronomers focused a telescope on Uranus in hopes of learning about its atmosphere. They weren't ring hunters at all. And yet, their mission led to a shocking revelation, triggering the biggest discovery in rings in more than 300 years. Ever since Galileo discovered Saturn's brilliant rings centuries ago, the quest for more rings was on. Yet hundreds of years rolled by without another discovery to the enormous frustration of ring hunters. So in 1977, when a small team of researchers staked out the planet Uranus, their sole interest was its atmosphere. On March 10th, the team flew a modified jet to the edge of Earth's atmosphere and trained their telescope on the seventh planet from the sun. They were waiting for the moment when a distant star would pass behind Uranus. They were measuring the brightness of a star as a function of time as it was going to pass behind the planet. And in this way, you can study the structure of the atmosphere of the planet. But as the star approached Uranus, something strange happened. Before it went behind Uranus, the light actually blinked out several times. Stunned scientists waited to see what would happen when the star reappeared on the other side. And then after emerging from behind Uranus, it blinked out several times as well. 
the team had discovered something completely unexpected. The dips on one side of the planet were perfectly symmetrical to those on the other. It meant they had found a second planet with rings. That was a surprise and it was very exciting to see for the first time. It was the first new ring system discovered in more than 350 years, and it would open the floodgates. Two more ring systems would soon be discovered, one on distant Neptune and one on the largest planet, Jupiter. So we now know that four planets in our solar system have rings, and in fact, all four of the giant planets orbiting the sun have ring systems. But if rings are common, why did it take astronomers so long to find the others? Because the rings of the other planets are quite different than Saturn's. It wasn't by accident that Saturn's rings were discovered back at the beginning of the 17th century, and no other ring system was found until near the end of the 20th century. Saturn's rings are broad, they're bright, they're spectacular. The other systems are much more subtle. Subtle in part because of their size. A very surprising aspect of the discovery of Uranus's rings was that they're very narrow. Most of Saturn's rings are thousands of miles wide. By comparison, the majority of Uranus's rings cover less than two miles. The other part is that they're very, very dark, whereas the rings of Saturn are made of ice and they're very bright. Think about uh, something much darker than tar. They're as black as anything you can probably see. What's more, the outermost rings of Uranus are so dim, ring hunters didn't find them until 2003. This is largely because there is almost nothing in them. Throughout the system, there's clouds of very faint dust at this level of a filling factor of one in 100,000 or one in a million. These particles are spaced so far away from each other, it would be like a cosmic racetrack that stretched from the Earth to the Moon and back, and it would have just a handful of cars on it. It's a radical difference from Saturn's rings, where particles are often packed in side by side, bumper to virtual bumper. The outer rings of Uranus are extremely sparse, but they are not the faintest. That award goes to the outermost bands around the fifth planet from the Sun. Mighty Jupiter has the most delicate rings of all. So far, astronomers have identified four ethereal rings circling the planet. An inner ring, the main ring, and two outer rings. Unlike the icy chunks bigger than a car found in Saturn's rings, the particles in the rings of Jupiter are mainly the size of the finest dust. We often refer to these as dust rings, but the better word would be smoke rings. The particles are microns in size. The smoke coming off of a fire is basically microns in size. The rings, like the planet, are mammoth, sprawling nearly 300,000 miles in diameter. Yet incredibly, if you squashed all the particles into a single ball, it would be no wider than a football field, and perhaps as small as the distance of a first down. There is so little in the two outermost bands that they are the faintest rings ever detected in our solar system. Almost invisible, they are called the gossamer rings. You could actually sit inside the gossamer ring of Jupiter and not even know it was there. I mean, maybe you'd hear an occasional ping on your spacesuit as a dust particle came by, but you would not see anything. <laughs> 